Hey guys, welcome back to Come Again. I'm Shannon, and today we're going to be going over Ghostbusters 101 number two from IDW Publishing. So stay tuned. So, hey guys, welcome to Come Again. If you're new, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little bell. Comment below, hit the like button, and maybe even share with your friends. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back. As I said, today we are going over Ghostbusters 101, number two from IDW Publishing, which was released yesterday, the 3rd of May. What came before? Look at the last issue. While stopping a nostalgic ghost from re recreating the long-destroyed Luna Park, the Ghostbusters managed to drench a residential section of Coney Island in mostly inert mood slime. The Environmental Protection Agency took offense and learning from Walter Peck's earlier failure to punish the Ghostbusters opted to hit the team with a fine they couldn't hope to pay. But Peter had an idea about new business. The Ghostbusters are going to begin teaching again. The class of teenagers we're calling the 101 class were shown the interdimensional transport unit by Kylie Griffin and witness their first alternate dimension. A dimension that holds a whole nother group of Ghostbusters. Ready for more? Let's go. So this story stars Dr. Peter Venkman, Dr. Ray Stans, Egon Spangler, Winston Zeddemore, uh, with support staff from Kylie Griffin, Kevin Tanaka, Janine Melnitz, and Jenny Moran, who is a former Ghost Smasher, but more so, She's a ghost. She's a good ghost who helps the Ghostbusters in teaching these students. The 101 class, Kate Hanner, Zoe Zawadzki, Evan Torres, and introducing the answer to call Ghostbusters, Dr. Abby Yates, Dr. Aaron Gilbert, Dr. Jillian Holtzman, Patty Tolan, and Kevin Beckman. So here we are, chapter two of the six part story. Let's show the new guy the magic door in the basement. The comic opens on a golf course, being haunted, and the answer the call Ghostbusters show up. And of course, Holzman makes a snide comment. I heard someone is having trouble with their balls. <laughs> so anyway, Abby is still trying to capture a spirit, a ghost for study. So far, she's ran out of luck every time she tries. The team destroy the ghosts. <laughs> and then Aaron is back at the firehouse doing paperwork, uh, getting the books in order. And she's not too thrilled with it, especially since Holtzman and Kevin are using the Ghostbusters professional bank account to buy outrageous items. Kevin orders a dozen cans of spray cheese and he uses them to create a beard and a big old blonde gooey hair looking thing for his head. All the while in the standard universe, a commercial comes on the air for the Ghostbusters. Oh no, it's a ghost. There's only one thing to do, throw them. Ghostbusting, it's only for the professionals, right? Well, not anymore. Have you ever wanted to see what makes an unruly apparition tick or operate a fully licensed nuclear accelerator and other fabulous equipment under controlled conditions or learn every bit of lore there is to know well now you can introducing ghostbusters 101 where for slightly less than the cost of a decent used car you can not only inform yourself about every kind of spook ghoul and ghosty in the tri-state area you can bust one safely in our state-of-the-art facility in Red Hook. And if you show some promise, you, yes you, could be recruited into the advanced program and trained for potential placement as a full-time Ghostbuster with great pay and benefits. Recruitment not guaranteed. Don't waste any time. 
This is your big chance, Ghostbusters. At that moment, while Janine is speaking with one of the new recruits, the one of the members of the 101 class, Dr. Carla Parker walks through the front door and asks to see Peter Venkman. She's there with her son, Garrett. Now, <clears throat> this is where things get a little bit, um, a little different. I spoke with Eric Burnham on Twitter last night after I read this, and it seems Garrett is loosely based on um, both Roland and Garrett from the Extreme Ghostbusters. Um, he has the appearance of Roland, the name of Garrett, and he is different. While not entirely confirmed in the story, you can kind of spot uh, what I'm talking about here. But like I said, Eric didn't completely confirm it to me. Um, it was just uh, kind of, he didn't deny it either. During the course of Garrett uh, joining the one-on-one -on -one class, he shows uh, specific qualities that normally are reserved for uh, people with autism. Um, like I said, it's not, it doesn't flat out state that he has autism, uh, but the way Dapper Dan uh, drew him and the way uh, Eric Burnham wrote him, you can, if you're familiar at all with autism, if you know anybody with autism, you can see the characteristics in him. He doesn't look anybody straight in the eye, uh, which is a big characteristic of autism. Um, he notices things that most other people wouldn't. Like one of the 101 class members, Kevin, walks with a limp that nobody else really noticed. And Garrett, he noticed right away. But Kevin invites Garrett upstairs to uh, be shown around. And Garrett says, um, sir, how did you lose your, your leg? And of course Kevin is, he says, why do you think I've lost my leg? I saw a lady with, uh, with a prosthetic in the hospital last week. You, um, you walk with the same kind of limp. Apparently, as a child, Kevin... Not the Kevin from Answer the Call Ghostbusters, this other Kevin from the main universe. He had childhood cancer and his leg was amputated. Um, I believe at the age of four, not entirely sure. Let me just double check on that. It says it was amputated just above the knee as when he was a child, but it doesn't really go into further detail. Um, even most of his... Uh, the other 101 class members and the Ghostbusters themselves didn't even notice, even when he wore shorts uh, a few days ago, a few days earlier. It's also revealed that Garrett's dad was suffering through cancer, and one of his coping mechanisms is to study the paranormal, and that's why his mom brings him to the Ghostbusters to join the 101 class to cope with his dad dying from cancer. Um, it's at this time, the other members of the 101 class are taught by Jenny, who at that moment, uh, just before he walks in, reveals herself as a class four semi-corporeal manifestation. These types of manifestations, she explains, have stronger ties to the physical world than most ghosts. Uh, they, we, can pass as fully human down to tangibility. A PKE reading is the only guaranteed way to be sure and you want to be sure. So it continues on. The 101 class take Garrett down to the basement and show him the gateway. Uh, this gateway is the same gateway the Ghostbusters used uh, to meet the real Ghostbusters from the animated series. It's the same gateway they used to get the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles back to their own universe. Uh, so on and so forth. Uh, they let Garrett stick his hand through there, uh, through the gateway, and suddenly a ghost grabs his hand. And uh, he quickly pulls his hand out, and they shut the gate, bringing part of the ghost with it. It's at that time Janine walks in and discovers what the 101 class has done. And she's not too happy with her niece and her niece's friends. Um, but then in the alternate universe... The ghost who loses a piece of himself through the dimensional gateway, he realizes that he's in two places at the same time. 
he can still feel that part of him that's unattached. So he decides he's going to figure out how to cross over into the other universe. It's at that time that back at the firehouse, the answer the call of Ghostbusters are doing what they do. And as Kevin and Abby are talking, Kevin somehow sees transparent versions of Peter and Ray walking up the stairs. He asks Abby if we know anyone named Venkman. It's at this time that issue number two comes to an end. And a great issue. I like the fact that Eric and Dapper Dan are have kind of merged uh, Roland and Garrett from the Extreme Ghostbusters into one person. And rather than being wheelchair bound, he's now autistic. Uh, which is really great because until now there there haven't really been uh, many autistic characters in comic books. Um, not Marvel, not DC, not Image. And if you guys recall, back in the 90s when Extreme Ghostbusters came out, it was a big deal that they had a Ghostbuster in a wheelchair. Um, they received a dozen uh, awards or so from disabled uh, charities or whatever for showing that even wheelchair-bound people can be heroes. Um, great story. I, I can't wait to see where they go with this. I'm almost starting to wonder if they're going to mer uh, merge the two universes together completely. Uh, this is a six-issue story, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be over with at the end of issue six. Uh, this could be a way for both uh, all the Ghostbusters teams to join together in one singular universe. And with the 101 class uh, coming about, we're about to get another new team of Ghostbusters, which is really great. And I saw a tweet, a tweet on a Twitter at one point uh, about Eduardo. Um, Eduardo, he's just a kind of a background character right now store helper at raise a cult books he and kylie griffin work together there but eduardo he's not really a member of the ghostbusters like ray and kylie are he's just uh support staff at raise a cult books and he's actually the one who was initially uh aware of gozer's sister's return in the mass hysteria comics um, he's the one who goes her sister Tiamat introduced herself to first before uh, Dana Barrett, before Louis Tully. It was Eduardo. So I'm really interested in seeing how they develop Eduardo's character. Um, he seems to be slightly different than his Extreme Ghostbusters counterpart. So that's going to be interesting. He doesn't really hit on Kylie as much as he does in the in the show. I don't know. I can't wait to see how this how this continues. We currently have the Ghostbusters International, which is just a a makeshift team of uh, one of the main Ghostbusters, along with Janine and Melanie Ortiz, which is the FBI agent, and so on. Uh, we have the Ghostbusters Chicago branch, which is the rookie from Ghostbusters video game. Uh, along with uh, the former Ghost Smashers. And now we've got this Ghostbusters 101 class and the Answer the Call Ghostbusters, as well as the main Ghostbusters. So this is a really interesting story. They're, they're expanding the Ghostbusters universe nicely. Um, I hope that once they're finished, that we get, that we get more titles, that we get more Ghostbusters titles to read and to look forward to. As of right now, uh, Ghostbusters is mainly just a mini series. Um, multiple mini series uh, like Mass Hysteria, like Pain and Love, like um, Ghostbusters 101, Ghostbusters and Ninja Turtles, Ghostbusters Meet the Real Ghostbusters, and so on. Maybe with them building up the Ghostbusters cast the way they are, hopefully we'll get more stories out of it. Uh, like we'll have the main Ghostbusters, then we'll have we'll get a Ghostbusters Chicago issue or title, a new Ghostbusters International title, and then maybe an Answer the Call Ghostbusters title and a Ghostbusters 101 title. 
I really like this. I would give this issue a 10 out of 10. I can't say enough good things about it. And from what Eric told me on Twitter yesterday is that the reason he, he did Garrett the way he did was um, a lot of people have been uh, saying to him, well, what about the other members of the Extreme Ghostbusters? Why isn't so-and-so in it? Why isn't so-and-so in it? So this was his way of getting out in front of it. It, it was a nod to the fans of Extreme Ghostbusters. You have this guy that looks like Roland, who's named Garrett. He's not really disabled, but he can relate to people outside of the comics in a way that Garrett did in the Extreme Ghostbusters episodes. So anyway, that's my review of Ghostbusters 101, issue number two. Check it out. It's out on stands now at your local comic book shop, Comixology. Make sure you guys go out and pre-order the rest of the Ghostbusters 101 series. This is a great series. I have a very strong feeling that it's going to lead to so much more in the IDW Ghostbusters universe. Uh, so there you have it, guys. I'm Shannon for Come Again. This was Ghostbusters 101 number two. Take care. If you like this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like, comment below, and share with your friends. <laughs> I hate you.